got up last night at 2 o'clock in the morning and it literally felt like, you know that scene in Alien vs Predator or another kind of alien film where something look, just like pierces its way out of a, someone's stomach. My belly was literally like here. It was like twice as far out than it was supposed to be. I was in like so much pain and I'm like, what is happening to me? And I'm just pacing around the flat. I'm like trying to like get rid of it, like kind of try and stretch. I'm like this. I'm like, <sighs> run back in and get my. I have two alarms. One goes off at seven. One goes off at like five past ten past. Um, I run in and turn off the other alarm. Go back out. And, like, <sighs> and then I get back into bed and lie down, like lie on it, and that feels better. And then I go back to sleep and slept it off. But Jesus Christ. Firstly, it's really annoying because it took out my um, sleeping pattern. So now I've got to figure out. The problem with missing and going th sleeping through the night like that, kind of sleeping through the night like that, is that now I have to, I can't, I'm not going to be tired enough to have a nap at lunchtime or a nap in the evening. So it just, it properly ruins you. There's no way of like just carrying on as normal. I can't just have those extra sleeps and be fine. You know what I mean? Um, but yeah, so I'm, I'm annoyed at that, but also, Terrified at the concept of just how fucking bloated I was and like I don't know why So that was a party in the park Because now what's better staying up awake all through the day so that I'm tired enough for tomorrow or Trying to have a nap even though I'm clearly not tired enough and then not having a nap and I think that's semi damaging Like lying down to have a nap but not napping Kind of like Gets you used to not napping, you know? I'm gonna try it. Um, Laura says I should try it as well. I haven't been, what I've basically been doing is if I ever miss, I just kind of try and get myself tired enough so that I'm forced to nap, which is how it's supposed to be. <laughs> um, but yeah, so you're low in it. God damn. The sleep thing is hard. It's hard, but it's worth it. I just, I need to get balls deep in it basically. Naps went surprisingly well today. Well, I had a bit of a nap at lunchtime, but. I'm surprised at that, genuinely. Not only that, but also had a pretty productive day, which I'm all about. I'm all about that. Start of the next sprint tomorrow. Um, so we've got planning sessions and stuff, but still getting in. Getting in on the boys. Also, when I wake up in quarter of an hour's time, I'm going to be working on um, configuring, actually like driving in configuration stuff into my platform. Which I know I've said a while ago, but I keep hitting more infrastructure to set up. I actually had an issue that I wasn't authenticating properly. Fix the authentication, I'm in. There's one more thing I need to do, which is create a um, gateway into the application because uh, at the moment I'm just hitting the application directly, but at some point it will be, you can hit one thing as a public endpoint and then that knows which server to talk to. Um, once that's like the last little bit of configuration that I need to set up and then I've got like it all and then I just need to do different microservices around and about the place. But I don't think I'm going to do that configuration just yet. I don't think. Try and develop some goddamn features. <laughs> no way. No way. Although I have noticed that the user doesn't seem to get signed out. I'm not sure about that, but we'll forget that. I may have miscalculated not bringing an umbrella, an umbrella today because it is just about to start spinning. Here's something I noticed last night. I just got to the point now where I don't have to do infrastructure if I don't want to. And I realise how scary that is. Compared to actually writing like platform slash business logic, uh, it's a lot more daunting having to write your own stuff than it is having to write things that are just you know what I mean like I've now got to like design and commit to something now it's my own code I didn't have to do that for infrastructure so um as I walked past them builders they started talking I was like you talk to me I don't but yeah I spent like it took me a while to get back into it because I'm like oh, I don't really want to because I've got to make decisions that then last and have an effect on my code. Whereas all infrastructure stuff is kind of like either going to make my life easier or it's just a given. Like I need security and I need all this kind of garbage. Not a win today, I apologise for that. It's also the last day of not having a Christmas market. So enjoy the freedom to walk around. Um, God damn it, it's going gonna, it's gonna to be great. I do want to um, have a look up there at a shop though that might sell a coat. And you gotta look around the Christmas market at some point, but today I need a nap. It was not true. Although the market officially opens tomorrow, apparently it was open as we walked back home. So I was walking back with someone else to the bus and it was just round. But it did feel really Christmassy. So tomatoes, tomatoes, all of that kind of good stuff. We had a pretty productive day today. We like flew through some things. We had some planning, which went well. We're like all settled down now. I've got like the next three days, it's just me and the office for my team. So it's like a 
head down, get shit done. I'm going to get one, through, one thing through test and I want to start and get as far into the next story as I possibly can by Tuesday when my teammate comes back. Otherwise, successfully napping at work. I'm like pretty fucking good at napping at work now. That's good. Came back, had a nap as well. Um, sit in my pyjamas because dinner was ready as I woke up because Laura had to run off to go for netball. And now I am going to do some programming until Laura gets back. That's the plan of attack. It's like legitimately just like hammering it down. So I don't think, I can imagine Laura's going to be back soon. <laughs> I don't think they're going to play through torrential rain, right? And we refocused our uh, project at work um, to be a little bit more streamlined and quicker to make. Um, we like stepped away from a microservices infrastructure and moved towards this kind of like, kind of s split into sections, like basically one huge microservice, um, one big monolith microservice um, and whatnot. I kind of like, I didn't really appreciate why it would be such a pain in the ass to carry on with the microservice architecture. I kind of felt that we could have kept the architecture we currently had and then just kind of built up one microservice in that architecture to be a beast that did everything and then work from there so you could move on etc but it's actually a massive pain in the ass <laughs> trying to do microservices and like sharing code in between them all every time you want to be able to create like a little helper you could just like write it each time in each service or you could write a little test helper which a uh, little helper which means that you don't have to write it every single time so i want to pull out the um, party id from the person's claims so as a person on my platform has like certain claims against them, um, they can like view their own party ID and that way when you call the web service you don't have to provide your own ID, uh, you just call it, it'll go get me my thing and it'll go oh you're this person, bang. So the process of figuring out your party ID, uh, extracting that claim information from the user, is ba you basically just get, uh, you do like this.user.find first and then the claim type, um, which is like party ID. Um, and then you would pass that back into a GUID. But I've got to do that in every single method that requires that check. Which feels like... It's not very dry. It's not very dry. So, in a nice big monolith, you basically just create a test project, uh, a, a project in that thing called Shared, <laughs> and then you just fucking put helpers in it. And it's great. You've got like, a load of string helpers, you've got a load of like, number helpers, it's all grand. In this world, I've got to be like, right, so which microservice should have that helper in it? Does it make sense for the security service to present out a NuGet package which has that extension in it? Arguably, yes, because it's also got the, um, the like, claim type, the string in it, um, the, like, party ID representation. That's a constant that's stored within the security service, so maybe it should. But... Should it maybe live with the security services infrastructure stuff? So I have a NuGet package that is used in each microservice to configure the microservices up properly. So they're all configured the same way, you don't have to copy and paste it across all of them, you just update it in one place, update the NuGet package, have a and birthday. Makes sense for that to have that configuration. And in fairness, it is a bit of a pain in the ass having to jump out of a project, add something to a, a project here to do it properly. Like, it is a pain in the ass. I could just smash it in and then maybe in the future at some point make it into a NuGet package. But I, everyone knows I'm not that kind of person. If I'm gonna, if I'm gonna do it, I'm gonna do it properly first time in. Um, I'll be feature, like, light on features, agile on features that are required, and like requirements, but actual like code quality is like fucking through the roof. So the problem with like printing time, like essentially what I do when I get up late, uh, getting up and like shifting my time pattern is that I've been able to create more hours in the day and I'm able to do that in a healthier way. But the problem with that is time is a little bit like money and you never really have enough of it, you know? You always want more, no matter how. You could be like a millionaire and you'll always be like, oh, but I could be a billionaire, you know? Just spent like three hours, about to head back to bed for a nap. Just spent about three hours on my own project. Um, made some significant progress, job done. But I keep getting like distracted by other things that I want to do that aren't in my project. So I keep having this idea, or having ideas for test helpers that make tests easier, um, and it would make sense for me to release those test helpers on like NuGet or whatever. And today I was looking for a way to do a strict, um, uh, basically replicates mock, mocks strict um, behavior in uh, in Substitute, which is the mocking variable that I use, um, which doesn't currently support it. 
and then I'm like having a deep dive into their code base. I'm like, oh, what's going on here? I reckon I can add a little extension method in here that will be able to just query all of the stuff they've got to do, and then happy days. You can just be really clever about it, um, or you could go deep diving in. And I'm like, but I can't justify spending time on that just for the sake of this one test. <laughs> I'm already trying to get more time out of the day. I can't justify splitting it out onto other things. Um, so I need to figure out that balance. <laughs> basically but I, I do want to um, I do want to write that and other things like it as well I've had a couple of ideas for like test helpers that are useful um, which like I say makes help it makes sense to for me to publish um, so yeah I might look at doing that what I might do is keep like keep Atlas up and running and then create that thing like on my laptop and then if I'm ever like sat watching TV or something that I'm not bothered about watching uh, I can just like tinker but I'm not like on the clock quote unquote, uh, because I time all of the things I do on different projects, so I'm, cause I always find if I've got a timer ticket I'm much more focused, um, but yeah I might do that, so I'm like on my laptop I'll try and spin up these things as like a side project to my side project, yeah, god damn it, but yeah like it's surprising how much time I have in a day and there still isn't enough. I didn't actually head out at lunch yesterday, I just had a nap and watched the budget like a nerd, um, but today I definitely do want to, Laura's seen a double-breasted coat from All Saints Online and it might be a go. To be honest with you, I don't think it will be because I think I basically just want this and no one's making this and it isn't the same. It is like double-breasted and it's much kind of smarter. I don't think it's going to be as floaty. I think it's going to be more like boxy, you know, um, which I don't want. But I also think I have some kind of strange nostalgia for this coat, even though I actively own it. So I don't think I'll ever be happy, but so we're going to go and find out. These were all open yesterday as well, so it's officially on, starting this afternoon I guess, or well, later on in the morning. That waffle one is going to be difficult to resist if it ever opens early enough in the morning for me to see it. Look, it like all, oh, it's everywhere. Going a strange way back, because I had to go via All Saints. God, the sheds go up here as well, they just lost the wood. They ran out of wood for all the sheds, so they just got a load of marquees up here, blimey. I've ordered a coat, oh no, no, they've got sheds. Um, I've ordered a coat, haven't seen it in IRL. But I tried on a similar one and it looks good. He typoed my email address though, so I had to go and confirm that I was actually getting it. So, um, but no, that's good. Whew. So I haven't seen it IRL, so it might not be perfect. I might still send it back, but it was quite a steal to be honest with you. And um, like I say, it looks good. And I tried on a similar one, which was a good length and a good fit. So hopefully the added style will just put it over the edge. It's slightly different to this, but not crazy different. I have missed my first bus though, so that's sad. <sighs> but I got a coat. Oh, I can't wait for it now. 52 minutes, that says. Holy fuck, it's gonna be like this for like a week or two. Jesus. Fortunately, I was able to cut past along my normal, um, like, kind of shortcut. The traffic on the main road that I drive in on in the morning is really bad when I go home. And it usually says, like, 35 minutes, but it's a deep red 35 minutes, which means it's gonna take 40. Um, that time it was 52 deep red, so it's probably gonna take way over an hour. Um, but there is this like little sideway where you can go, where there's no traffic information for it because it's like country lanes. Um, and it guarantees I can get back basically within half an hour, which is always good. Um, problem is that next week, <laughs> right in the middle of the Christmas market, that road is closed. So I'm gonna have to slum it with the plebs. And, ah, oh, god damn. It's gonna really make me miss uh, want to have a longboard or a different way in because it's gonna take me so fucking long to get back. And I've like not had a nap properly. I got, I got back, I lay down and I lie there for like um, 15, 20 minutes. I'm like, well, this is this is shot. I'm not gonna get to sleep now. Um, but yeah, so otherwise my coat will be arriving within like three to five days or something. Probably on Monday it'll probably arrive. We'll see what it's like. Um, like I said, I've not seen it in person, but I have a good idea it might fit. Um, it was heavily reduced. It was like 30% off because of Black Friday, um, which is dope. Saved me a fortune. But like Laura thinks that as soon as I bought one, I'd just be happy with it. But it's still like 300 pound coat. Like it still cost a lot of money. And there is also that 300 pound could have gone towards my longboard. <laughs> so there is a bit of that. Um, so we'll see. I'm, gonna try, I'm, like, I'm not gonna keep it for the sake of keeping it. Um, but it, I did like it. It, it, it. Well, no, I liked a similar one to it, which was long and single-breasted. Um, 
but yeah, we'll, we'll find out. A day this week as well that Laura isn't, um, like she's doing stuff tonight, so she's busy. She's like at some social event thing after work. So I'm eating on my own, um, which is bizarre. And like, it's gonna be a strange weekend as well, because Laura's not gonna be here at the weekend for like a good 24 hours of it at the very least. Um, and I'm working from home tomorrow because I've got to go to the dentist. So it's gonna be an odd one. I'm gonna probably go mental, um, <laughs> to be quite frank. Um, I'm thinking of not doing programming. I'm just gonna chill for a bit until after dinner and then I might do a little bit of work. At half past eight, she's, not, she's still doing, she's asked me like um, if I know any Formula One winners. And we, we use Google Allo now to chat. So I just did uh, the, the, the equivalent of doing a let me Google that for you but in Google Allo where you just go at Google. Formula One champions and he just lists them. <laughs> it's pretty fucking dope. I'm a big fan of Google Allo. In the same way I was a big fan of Google Plus. No one uses either though. But I had a good leverage to get Laura in because we, her phone doesn't receive text messages for some fucking reason. It's dawned on me that actually the coat I've ordered and this coat are actually very different. I'm not gonna find a coat that's exactly like this. So it is literally, it has to be so good that I want to throw this in the bin and I'd be happy to throw it in the bin. If part of me thinks, oh I'll keep this just in case, it's not good enough, I need to send it back. That's the thing. But the thing that I've realised is the main difference, apart from the shape, is like the fact that you can like pull this over. So this button's like right up to the top, like here, if you've got a scarf on. Um, and the other one's only got like three buttons instead of like eight. So I think that's the difference. It's kind of like a, a long pea coat rather than a military coat. Otherwise, I'm heading to the dentist. I'm working from home today. Um, I haven't worked from home since about. March, April last year when I was having car problems, I had to take the car to the um, garage. I didn't like working from home then um, because I'm a social being. Um, I like being around people, although we have Slack and stuff so I can talk to them still, but um, it's just not quite the same, you know? We'll see how it's going. I've got like, I've got everything set up, ready to rock and roll. I've got like a, basically a couple of hours of just like, right, focus, get this thing out. And then as soon as that thing's out, I can, um, I'm be basically like stuck in like a pipeline, so I'll be helping out with testing and pull requests and all that kind of stuff until I can get mine through test and pull requests. Although there are some things that I can do on the next story on this branch without too much hassle and without like getting in the way. Um, we've got to be very proactive with this story to make sure that we can uh, get everything in properly. But I basically may start the next story as this story and just, and just hide it all in the back. Thankfully, all is good in the hood. Happy days, I'm all good about that. So, just cruised on back and I'm just getting some work. No, I'm gonna have a drink now. My, and I was just trying to figure out whether it was my monitor that was wobbling or my vision. My vision's just going, like, <laughs> which is really strange. Um, but yeah, so I've got, I've got everything set up now and I'm into work. Oh, I'm I'm expecting to be dialed into stand up at half past, but otherwise I'm just churning through some validation stuff. I've like figured it all out yesterday. I've just got to write the test. So I've like proof of concepted it. Um, just writing all the tests, and then I've got to do the same on the front end, which is just basically a copy and paste job. Um, make sure it appears in the UI, smash in a PR, and then I can start working on some other back end stuff. I'll swap batteries again. I think feel like either my charger is broken or my camera is. We'll find out. You forgot about me. Um, otherwise, I am just still working on this, but I'm toying with the idea of making another purchase that I've been thinking about making for a long time. I've purchased a coat, may or may not go back, whether I like it or not. There's one other thing I've been hovering my nose over and I was going to buy at some point in the future, but today is £100 cheaper than it would be if I got it in February. Logic being A, it's cheaper now, um, and B, February is quite expensive anyway because I have to do car stuff around February, um, but secondly, the downside is it will be it will lessen my birthday to a certain extent because I'll have it earlier than my birthday. Mm. Time for a cup of tea. Um, I've ordered a present for Dad, a present for myself, and a present for Laura. So I'm going to put the fucking debit card down for a little bit. I think one PR ready. I've just got the joys of a rebase to go through. Um, but otherwise, I don't know if this is TMI or not. But you know when like it's. It's quite cool in here, so I want to wear a hoodie, but then it's just really sweaty when I wear a hoodie. I just get, it's like really close, it's horrible. Um, so yeah, I didn't know, maybe it's too much information. Who knows? Trying to wire in some front end validation, and we could have done this thing really easily <laughs> if we'd have let Razor, like we've got, we're using Vue.js as our um, like MVVM kind of framework. Um, and what we could have done is dynamically just loaded everything on the page and then di just hide the content that they don't need yet. That would have worked. 
because then we could just use the back end validation to drive down really, really easily. But now we can't as easily because the um, model is we're using like it's regenerating a load of well, it's, I guess it's not. I guess it is there. It's in the JavaScript. Um, so I've got to try and get model binding to work at that like kind of low down level. I don't think it's going to be too difficult, to be honest, but I just need to do it. Right, so I need to copy and paste my validators from the back end because they're basically identical. There's no point rewriting those from scratch. Um, right, head down. Looking forward to my lunchtime nap. I get to sleep in an actual bed instead of like being on my desk. <laughs> it looks like my antivirus has decided it's lunchtime, as it does. <laughs> every night, Thursday or whatever other day, uh, Friday and whatever other day it is because my computer is running like an absolute pig. Also, it's like fucking hot. It's normally on a dock so it's not touching the desk um, but like it is kicking out some heat and I've realised that the battery lasts when it's not plugged into a dock about two hours <laughs> of just like constant. The problem is it's actually not a very powerful laptop like the processor, to be fair the processor is good, RAM is always at max, always. Um, and all that shit. Anyway, I am um, calling it. Let's go and have a nap. Um, and then we'll carry on after lunch. Oh, this ain't easy, man. I think we've made it, made some bad decisions <laughs> on the way that we do this page. Oh, I've got to try and integrate um, validation in, and I want the validation to be driven from the back end. And I don't know how to do that without writing my own fucking custom framework to do it, basically. With, like, and it'll be in the JavaScript as well. Like, they would have to manage it in the JavaScript. And I want it to be driven from um, ASP.NET validation. Oh, because then we can use Fluent validation. Shit. Why does this always seem to happen? <laughs> Why couldn't I have just pushed validation out of the story and we could have delivered without validation? I just feel like this happens to my team. And I feel like... I feel like it makes us look bad because the other team can just churn out small user stories whereas we pick up bigger stories and then they just, we don't like underperform on them because they're too big. Whereas the other guys basically just dodge all of the complex stuff until we've done it in a big story and then they just roll it in. Fuck. I think the, the problem is we've got this big form that we need to validate and I think the form is too big to have it rendered by the razor, by the by the back end, and then have view um, hide it. I think it's too big for that. I don't think that'll work. So at the moment we've got different components, and then the view is responsible for ajaxing out and getting the validation uh, and getting the result. But then if that object that I'm pulling down has validation errors on it, then I need to know about it. And how do I do that? <laughs> That'd be great if if the kitchen all there. You go. I'm googling things on Atlas here and then trying to swipe the mouse over onto my work laptop here and if I do that one more time I'm going to throw the mouse out the fucking window. Fuck me, we've decided to just take an axe to it. We're going to take an axe to the entire front end, rebuild it all into Razor, drive it from the back end. Um, anything else is a, like, a, uh, fuck my life. One of them things where we just built it basically entirely wrong. Oh, at the moment all the view is doing it, we're not doing postbacks to do all the validation, we're not doing the postbacks to do like adding more things to that page, it's all being driven by the view and components are being loaded in by the view eh? um, asynchronously. Basically fuck that, post it, get it the fuck down, <laughs> just use view to hide stuff if it's not there. What a bastard, but that basically means that I've just got to undo what my teammate did <laughs> for the entire, basically the entire sprint basically like a week's worth of work, I'm just going to basically axe and then try again, do it again, but, but better. Fuck. <sighs> I didn't want to do that. I'm going to have to do it this weekend as well, because we can't, we can't afford not to get this done. We was on holiday for like three days and then we just fucking have a, have a brief meeting and just cut out all of his shit. Oh. Right, so plan of attack is... I'm going to stop doing this for now, I think. I've, I've come to an end on this story. Um, I'm just going to pull all this into the MVC. I'm going to set this up so that I just use one monitor and use Atlas's keyboard. Um, 
so that I don't have to fuck around using this laptop keyboard because it's going to take me forever. I'm just going to fly the fuck through it. Like, we, we can't delay this story as much as I hate <laughs> the concept of doing things at home and it not necessarily being obvious how much time I've done it at home for. Because we should keep eyes on how much... Well, I'll still log all the time I've done. I'll spin up a new story and do it, but... Estimating about 10 hours of dev time to get it up and running. God damn, it's a good job I'm awake a lot and it's a good job I've got the weekend to myself because Laura's not here. Um, I'm just going to have to sacrifice my own project this weekend. So this incentivizes me to do it quicker, doesn't it? I wish I had a keyboard I could plug into this so that I can still operate Atlas while using this. Put that on that, you know? I literally can't even use the mouse because <laughs> the mouse is the same plug into Atlas as it is into, like, they share the plug, the USB port. Anyway, I've got to chill out for a bit, man. And this video's got a little bit long, so let's end it here. I will um, continue tomorrow, as I normally do with these kind of half-daily vlog vlogs. Quite an annoying day today. Um, I've managed to raise a task before the end of day, so that the board went back up on the on the chart, on the burn down chart, and I'll drive it back down. My plan is to spend the morning working on it. Um, so I'm going to get up at two, and I'm just going to plow through it. It's the kind of thing that's going to be relatively easy to plow through, um, because like the back end API is there, all I need to do is just do all the posting and stuff. It's just basically an MVC controller. Um, it's just going to be a bit fiddly getting the JavaScript to make it look right on the front end. Um, but I've got some things I can basically copy, so it's good stuff. Um, it's just going to be good fun. Um, otherwise, ladies and gentlemen, um, I'm probably going to end up having another long video because I'm on my own for the majority this weekend. Um, and I'm awake a lot, so I need someone to talk to. So I will come back, basically, and uh, I will, whatever, Trevor. <laughs> We've got a lot of things to look forward to. We're gonna have a week, we're gonna have a weekend of boring programming stuff. I'm gonna be programming for work. I'm gonna be programming for myself. I'm gonna be on my own. I'm not, I'm not gonna leave the house. <laughs> I've got no reason to leave the house. I've got no money to leave the house. So um, we're doing that. And then um, <laughs> next week will be a really interesting week because not only do I have a new coat, my present will arrive, which I'm super excited about. Able but um, and and other things are going well. No, that's about it for that week. But I'm super excited about both of those things. Um, and I've literally put I haven't shut up about it. And then next weekend we'll be uh, finalising other Christmas presents, and then we're set for Christmas. Happy birthday! Oh my god! Oh my god! It's literally a birthday. Oh my god! Anyway, look forward to that. I'm sure I'm not going to shut up about it for a long time. So. Thanks for watching this video, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, come back tomorrow or in my next video to figure out how my weekend of programming goes. Hopefully I get a good significant chunk of time on my own stuff um, and get my um, code store stuff repository tracking thing in. Um, but priority to a certain extent. I'll, I'll be flipping between the two projects, but priority to a certain extent is all work one because I can't let our team drop the thing, drop the ball. <sighs> I'd normally be against this kind of thing, but we, well, we cocked up both with like what we committed to do and um, how we went about doing what we, as we wanted to do. Wrongly or rightly, whoever's fault it is. It's our fault, collectively. So, I'll sort it out. Come back, I'll catch you later.